This is the Fifth Estate, a conversation between young African scholars from the Fort Hall School of Government and Professor Mutahi Guni. Happy New Year, Kenyans, and a prosperous 2019. This being the last Sunday of 2018, we will issue a public notice to the government pursuant to Article 1 of the Constitution, and I quote, all sovereign power rests with the people. Given this power, we, the people, demand a truthful new year from the government. We, the people, declare 2019 the year of truth. How bad is our debt? We want the truth. Have we mortgaged Mombasa port to the Chinese as revealed by the Auditor General? We want the truth. And what else have we mortgaged and we were not told? If we are required to pay 1 trillion shillings every year from a budget of 2.4 trillion, can we afford to service our national debt? If we fail to pay the China people, will they take over the Mombasa port? We want the truth. But there is one more thing. Is the country broke? Are we having big plans and no cash? Will 2019 be a year of broke Kenyans? We want the truth before the year starts. We the people declare this year the year of truth, but we also declare it the year of restoration. Instead of destroying, we want to restore. Instead of stoning our thieves, we want to change their ways. And this is what the carpenter from Nazareth taught us. This is the meaning of Christmas. It is about restoring people who do not deserve mercy. We the people are tired of demolitions with contradictions. You demolish a hotel next to the American embassy because it is five floors high. Then you allow a huge seven-floor complex sharing a fence with the same embassy to survive. This is a contradiction. No justice, no truth. And this is why Elohim the Almighty created Christmas. He wanted to expose the hypocrites and Pharisees and government, the club of convenient and calculated contradictions. And he exposed this house of Pharisees 2,000 years ago. We the people declare 2019 the year of restoration. Instead of demolishing homes, temples and supermarkets, Uhuru should negotiate. And if we do not move from demolitions to restoration, 2019 will acquire a life of its own. And Uhuru Kenyatta will be the first casualty. Happy Truthful Year. We the people declare 2019 the year of truth, the whole truth. And we declare 2019 the year of history. Yes, we have mortgaged Mombasa port to the Chinese in exchange of SGR. And if we fail to pay, they will repossess it through a court process. By the way, the tribunal that will hand over the port to the Chinese is based in China and uses Chinese law. We are Boiro. But if we, the people, declare 2019 the year of history, we must also ask a few questions of truth. Is this the first time Kenya has mortgaged its assets? How did we sell Kenya Post and other parastatals? And who owns Safaricom and Ampesa? Akikuyu from Moranga? Who owns Nation Media? Uncle Moody Awori? What about Airtel? Is it owned by the Patels of Pangani jointly with the Motisos of Makueni? Zero. Nothing. Laikipia is owned by 22 Muzungu families. The tea farms of Kericho and Bomet are owned by Muzungu companies. And the sandy beaches of Malindi have been mortgaged to the Italians. If 2019 is the year of truth and history, the truth is that we have mortgaged the entire country. Period. Give Uhuru Kenyatta a break. 
We the people declare 2019 the year of positive vibes. And we the people demand that Uhuru Kenyatta be the leader of the positive vibes. If 2019 is the year of truth, the truth has two sides to it. On the one side, we are in debt and Mombasa port has been mortgaged to the Chinese. But on the other side of the coin, the blue economy is projected to make 1 trillion shillings every year. Using fish, we can pay our national debt, just like that. In fact, if the Chinese were clever, they should have mortgaged Lake Victoria instead. On corruption, 1% of the national budget has to be eaten. It is called the Law of the Tethered Goat, LTG. A goat must eat where it is tethered. But instead of focusing on the 1% eaten by the tethered goat, Uhuru should focus on the 99% of the budget that was not eaten. Today, 99% of our news focuses on 1% eaten by the tethered goat, while 1% of the news focuses on the 99% that went to good use. If 2019 is the year of positive vibes, we want the president to focus his 99% energy on the 99% good work he has done. 2018 has been the longest, brokest, and most uninspiring year of all time. It taught us that we live in borrowed times and we walk in rented shoes. But 2018 taught us one more thing, that the best days of our lives have not happened yet. And this is a positive way of looking at a broke and long year. And as we wait for the brighter 2019, because I think it will be bright, I want to wish you a prosperous new year with the words of one of my favorite poems. I wish you enough sun to keep your attitude bright. I wish you enough rain that you can appreciate the sun even more. I wish you enough happiness to keep your spirit alive. I wish you enough pain so that the smallest joys of life appear much bigger than you think. I wish you enough gain to satisfy all your needs. I wish you enough loss so that you can appreciate all that you have. I wish you enough. Although 2018 was a broke year, we had enough if we are still alive this Christmas. And I pray that Kenyans will liberate themselves from the spirits of complaining. Complaining and constantly saying Uhuru is a problem. This Christmas, we have enough. And I pray that we will go into 2019 with the mentality that what we have is good enough. Prosperous New Year. And now, our final thought. We, the people, declare 2019 the year of precedent. Precedent means that if something has happened before, it will happen again. It is the law of theoretical history. And this is a law that presidents are never taught. They learn the law on the job. Mzee Moy was slapped and molested by the Kiambu Mafia under Jomo. When he became president, Moy forgave them all. And because Moy forgave, we forgive him as well. He remains dear to us, despite his reign of terror. This is called precedent. If Mze Moy forgive, we forgive him. Mze Kibaki suffered from intellectual braggadocio. He called us kumbafu because we could never measure up to his superior intelligence and he was dead right. But Mze Kibaki cheated Raila in 2002. This lie invited the 2007 violence. This is called precedent. What you do to others will be done to you. 
If 2019 is a year of history, something happening today will happen tomorrow. It is called the law of precedent. If the Kikuyus cheat Ruto today, the sword of truth will be lifted against them tomorrow. What Uhuru does today will be done to him tomorrow.